Huge thanks to my donors, Daniel, Nike, and Charlie for very nice donation. Spookiest small town slash local stories and myths. What's yours? Not my town, but town in West Virginia where my mom grew up. Really isolated town, way out in the mountains. Apparently some mid-level actress was murdered back in the day. Some black guy was paid to take the fall, but they never ended up finding her body. Of course, when anything spooky ever happens, they say it's her. What is actually creepy is there this old highway running through the town, and if you park your car on one particular section, it will get pulled up. What's weird is that it's an uphill slant, so there's no way it should be physically possible. Went when I was younger and it scared the crap out of me. During the late 19th through the early 20th century, there was a saloon turned speakeasy that operated on the banks of a river below the Sare Bridge. I never knew its real name, and it was long gone before I was even born, but everyone just called it the bloody bucket because people were forever getting killed, rolled, and tossed in the river, many never to be seen again. On at least two different occasions, men were lynched from that bridge, one white, one black the bridge is a ruin now, the wooden planks of its deck rotted away, but its bones remain. If you're brave enough, you can make your way through the underbrush, brave the rusty structure, and if you stand there in silence, you will hear their ropes still creaking. Bellflower CA. The city is riddled with miles, and miles of underground catacombs. The whole system is used by Satanists, to worship in private and for sexual abuse of unwilling children and women volunteers. One tunnel extends for miles emerging inside the bounds of the Schultz Steel Company, whose owners are Freemasons and also happen to be members of Disney's Club 33, an exclusive club inside the Disneyland Resort in Anaheim, California, the only place in Disneyland where alcohol can be purchased. Lots more to this story but this will have to do. There is an insect in Joshua Tree Park out in the CA. High desert. Except, no one has ever seen it and even entomologists have never seen an example of it. It makes the oddest, most messed up sound, all summer long, and the sound disappears once winter comes. You can hear the sound just seeming a few feet from you, and still not spot the creature making this sound. I guess you could sort of make a name for yourself as a great entomologist if you could ever track down the insect, that makes this absolutely bizarre sound. Not green texting, because I struggle to keep my writing comprehensible as is. I worked as a police officer in my small hometown, for a few years before leaving to pursue a degree. I responded to a haunted house once. Mom and her 7-year-old daughter rented the house for a week or two while the husband was out ocean fishing. Mom calls in that she thinks somebody is in the house. Five officers including myself arrive on scene, and set a perimeter. This is fairly easy as the house has a well-lit exterior, and one side of the house is right next to the neighboring one. We'll leave three on the exterior to cover the obvious exits, one K9 in the back. There were no footprints in the sandy yard, this is a beach area close to the coast. The lady had told dispatch, that she and the daughter were in a bedroom and had heard light footsteps out in the hallway, and she could see under the door that there was a shadow cast as if somebody was standing outside her door. The bathroom across the hallway's light was on, allowing the shadow to be seen. It was about 11 PM on a weeknight in the winter. Nothing really happening across the whole county, hence five officers jumping at a chance to do something. Once we had the three guys on perimeter, we had to have dispatch call the lady back, to let us in, since the doors were locked. She comes running with the kid, and opens the door then stands by her cars. I clear the house with one of my shift partners, we are thorough, checking under the beds, in closets, showers, crawl space under the stairs etc nothing, but mom and the kid scared shitless inside. Perimeter officers claim nobody left via any windows or doors. So we talk to the mom, my sergeant is a little hissy, because he felt she must have been bullshitting, because she was lonely or something. She informs us that all week she had been locking the doors, and finding them unlocked, finding cabinets open, and finding the lid to the hot tub on the third floor balcony, which didn't have stairs from lower floors, open despite her strapping it closed. Then the real kicker, she showed us a picture of the crack under the door, and there was a shadow there. Out of curiosity I closed the door and looked with nobody standing there and the shadow was not present. Had my partner stand there and the shadow looked like her cell phone picture. She claimed, 
that the footsteps sounded light, like somebody was barefoot, or a child was running around. We all figured the house must be haunted, and told her to call, if there was any other issues, but she said they were going to go to a hotel for the night. With the layout of the house, and no footprints in the sand, we really couldn't figure how anyone had slipped us. The front door was dead bolted, so they couldn't have gone up the concrete driveway and dead bolted the door behind them. Had some other creepy situations, but never saw any beasts or monsters other than humans, being pieces of shit. Thanks. Whenever I get together with my buddies from the department, we talk about that one. My sergeant had a story, where he thought he saw a drunk guy, trespassing on a second floor deck of a house across from a bar. Went to go check, had an officer watch the building, heard footsteps above him and had dirt like from under somebody's shoes go between the planks of the deck. But when he got up there nobody was there. Doors were secured, other officers saw nobody come off the building, or out other entrances. I wasn't there for that one so I can't attest to it. But I always found it interesting. Figured it must have been a ghost or my sergeant imagining things. A guy fed his wife into a wood chipper in my town. Also, there's an abandoned mental asylum in my town that people claim is haunted, but I've never seen anything while visiting it. Abandoned building about 15 minute drive away. Used to be train station for coal miners of the town. Apparently a lot of miners committed suicide on the tracks. Homeless people still occasionally kill themselves on the track. Actual building has no graffiti. Basement has a pentagram that has been covered up many times. It's kinda meme to go check if the pentagram is back, but someone keeps covering it up. Everyone knows about it, all the people my age, 18, openly talk about it. For some reason, it's often the punching bag for us. I.e., screw that haunted ass train station, it's just mad because no trains go visit it anymore, etc. Older generations don't talk about it, because a lot of people killed themselves there. Me and my friend group used to go there to eat Subway and shit talk the ghosts. Nothing ever happened, and we always talked about spending the night in the basement, but we never did. My house is very close to the tracks, and I hear a train every now and then. I'd say twice or three times a month, I hear a train on the track even though it's closed. Everyone else can hear it too, it's loud as hell. My two buddies love this building and supposedly hang out there like every day, here is one of their stories. Be it party. Want to leave? Retards decided to go buy some beers and hang out at the train station. It's like 2 a.m. or something. Here talking from basement. Basement has old as creepy metal door. They peek behind it. Four girls of various ages wearing regular hoodies, sweatshirts with hoods up. Standing around a pentagram lit by candles. Friends look at each other and have the perfect idea. Friend 1 slams door open. Friend 2 screams as loud as he can. Friend 1 screams too. Keep in mind it's dark as hell, so all these poor girls know as the door swang open and two guys screamed really loud. Friends immediately start laughing their ass off. One girl is crying and allegedly one shit herself. Girls leave in an angry fit. Friends laughing too hard to know what they are saying. Friends kick the candles from the pentagram away and mock the freak out of it. Bless the building and announcing the mentogram with cheap beer. Spend the night drinking. They then poured their leftover booze on the pentagram and called it a night. They can't keep a straight face when they tell that story, and it's always hilarious to hear them tell it. I grew up in a small town in West Virginia, less than 1,000 people in it. Next to my hometown, literally like 10 minutes away, is a town called Winfield. There was a high school there, think it's abandoned now that was pretty large. The principal had an infant son that passed away, and he looked to an alien cult called the Raelians, to clone his son in part of the chemistry wing of the school, he cordoned off. Eventually the feds got wind of it and shut it down. One day my friend told me that he was walking around a pond near his house, and saw a mass of people in black robes gathered around it and chanting. I have no clue if it's related, but I have a hard time thinking it's not. I wonder if they managed to do anything else in my area without getting caught. DuPont used to have plenty of plants down there, maybe that would attract them for whatever else they planned to do, plus the general isolation of the area. Everyone knows about the Mothman now. Not many people know about Intrad Cold. He showed up to Point Pleasant WV, about a week before the Mothman did. People claim they could communicate telepathically with him and he turned the room cold just by being in it, he had a weird sheen to his skin and spoke with a cadence that sounded like he didn't speak English very well, with an odd accent. Eventually the family that fostered him got visited by men in black. 
talk to old timers today in the area and they may have met him. There's a giant battlefield in North Georgia where a few thousand people died in a few days during the Civil War. There have been reported sightings of a green-eyed humanoid monster with long claws, ghostly silhouettes in the fog, tons of orbs and sounds of moaning at night. The whole place is super eerie. In Spartanburg, South Carolina, there is supposedly an underground private organization that does CERN type stuff. Like tampering with other dimensions. I think it's called Sunland but I'm not really sure. Really weird things happen in that area but this was years ago and I'm not sure if it's still going on or not. When I was hopping trains throughout the country I landed in Cheyenne, Wyoming. I needed a place to stay so I found an abandoned hotel that looked safe enough. Climbed the roof and crawled in through the attic window. Pretty creepy. In the lobby, all door keys were there, including some really cool Clint Eastwood and Elvis cardboard cutouts. Got to exploring, no electricity to the place. On the second night I found a little room with a glass panel looking into an actual room. In the actual room, I found that it was a one-way mirror. It really got me thinking about who was in the side room watching people. Haven't been there in almost 20 years, but I am pretty sure it's still there, being an historical building. Also used to sneak into the Gates Rubber Company factory, which was abandoned in Denver, Colorado. I slept in the elevator maintenance shack at the top of the building for when I needed a place to stay. The shack itself had all original repair parts on the walls and bins, and there was a workbench with two stools at it. The cupboard above had old mint green mugs and a few things to use for eating. I would sit there at night imagining what it was like to work there. The rest of the place was a huge factory and heavy with security. I would crawl into the property from the northwest side, through a trench I dug out that was not too visible from the driving patrols. There was a third floor at my high school, that was cut off from the rest of the building. Everyone says the reason behind it, was cause a kid hung himself from the stairwell. The creepy thing is when you walk all the way up any of the stairs, they just lead into the selling. The only way to get there is to take the handicap elevator. Perfect thread. Be me 17. Biking with a good friend of mine. Fat polished dude with good strength and endurance. Stop after a football field, we had gone this path many times. We're trailer with open windows about 25 meters from the path. It's dark inside the trailer and there seems to be stuff hanging from the walls and roof. Horrible putrid stench hits our noses. I know the smell is from something rotting, smells like rotten animal carcass, I would find in the woods. Tell him something is dead in there, and I know the smell. It's maybe a horse. I see like fur hanging from the ceiling, like it's rotting away, and falling apart from there, it looked like something exploded in the trailer. I tried to pass the gate but it was heavily locked, and I was scared to what it might be. Then one black BMW with tainted windows rolls slowly into the street, that was quiet. We get on our bikes and move out of the street, to act like we weren't actually looking at the trailer. The car stops in front of the trailer as we look back and we bounce. It probably was nothing, and just a dead animal but it looks very weird and made me think of that creepy pasta long horse so it freaked me out, I hope there is no dead open horse in there or a dead body, I'll be going back there in a few days I'm 19 now so don't ban me. Picture is a Google map of the trailer. A mysterious doctor would show up in town at our Victorian festival, and give miracle cures, that looked just like man's. Afterwards he would mysteriously disappear for another year. Of course he looked like my third grade teacher, and knew my name without asking for it. For a long time I lived in a small village in southern Germany. Every day I walked to the bus stop, to drive to school. There was this old, 60 to 70 years from my guess, man standing boat always with a half empty coke bottle, and the look of a psychopath. If you would greet him, he would never say anything just follow you with his psychic eyes. There was this rumor going around, that when the Murikans were stationed in Germany, they partied a lot, and they supposedly gave him acid, which sent him on a lifelong trip, from which he couldn't escape ever since. One night this dude went to the terrace of a friend's house and sat there in a chair at 3 a.m., mumbling random things to himself. This really crept me out as an eight-year-old. Someday he just vanished. Guess he died. I grew up in the country, and me and my brother used to play in the woods behind outhouse. It was a lot of land, that eventually emptied out near a highway, where they were building a water tower. We used to go up there, just to hang out near the highway, 
and there was always a ton of people doing work near the water tower. One time we were up there, and it looked like some big event was going on there, were maybe 10 cars and some heavy construction equipment, and a bunch of guys in suits. It creeped us out, so we went and go my dad to come look at the scene with us, and rode back out there on an ATV. When we got there everyone had cleared out, and it was starting to get dark, but there were people on top of the tower working on something making a bunch of freaking noise. We watched for a minute and my dad kinda got a feel, that we shouldn't be there and we took off. No idea what the situation was, but out there if you see someone in a suit, it meant something serious was happening. When I was a senior in high school, a girl two grades below me committed suicide by hanging herself by a chain in a tree in her yard. Her mom was sick with grief, and I don't know who put the idea into her head, but she thought her daughter would be resurrected. She was part of some assembly of God type church and the pastor also said that her daughter could be revived. The mom worked at Walmart, and was having people sign up to donate blood to pump into her daughter so she could come back to life. My stepmom worked at Walmart at the time, and recalls people telling the lady that what she was doing wasn't right. On the night the daughter was supposed to be revived, the police showed up to the abandoned pickle factory building they chose as the resurrection venue and shut it down. Be me. Postman Anon. Work in rural area in Maine. Isolated enough to be a super small town, but not isolated enough to be so depopulated we don't have a full-time post office. Most of my route is in the sticks and small suburbs. Mostly just listening to podcast and doing drone work on autopilot. Small town has some commercial spots for jobs. Off by its lonesome is an office building. Decent sized building, huge amounts of parking space. Is on my route but was vacant for years. Townsfolk say a computer company and a law firm used to work there. Years ago or something but shut down after 08 recession. Sometimes I'd go by and there'd be some lights on but no cars in the massive parking lot. Never saw anyone go in or out. One day we get a package for them. Standard Amazon box addressed to no names, and has the correct address and postage for the building. My boss says that maybe the building isn't vacant anymore, and they just moved in, are doing renovations. Cars had been spotted in the parking lot, some brief activity. When I show up it's empty. Was running late, it was mid-fall and was about dusk. Chilly too. Some lights are on. When I get to the door it's unlocked but the place looks like it hasn't been touched. One of the windows was spidered, glass was dirty, some litter and graffiti. Could just leave the package at the front door but I'm curious so I enter. It's a weird entrance. Goes into a small corridor. To my left there's an open door with a staircase going up and down. Absolutely pitch black. In front there's a pair of shut red double doors. To my right an open door with a well-lit hallway with one door directly at the end. No other doors or windows or paintings. Light switch is there, lights aren't automatic. WTF.exe Double doors are locked. Hello? USPS delivery. Anybody? No response. Decide screw it, and walk down the hallway anyway. As I'm nearing the door I hear, clear as day, running footsteps behind me. Literally feel the vibrations of the floor. They're accelerating down the hallway, increasing in intensity towards me. Gonna get mugged by a crackhead. Gonna get surprise butt sexed. Scream like a bitch fling around as fast as I can and drop the package. Absolutely nothing there. Goosebumps, panting, poo and pant. Just then I hear what sounds like a filing cabinet fall over from behind me. Behind the door. MFW. Genuinely scared out of my freaking mind and book it. Never tell boss what happened, tell her everything went fine. Nobody ever moved into that building. Moved out of town for college, friend tells me they sold the property and tore it down and are making it into a development scanned. Left with individual address. Me and friends used to walk a man-made trail through woods outside of town, this is in rural NC roughly halfway into trail is a split or divide of sorts. One way continues the trail back out of woods, other trail is just a footpath trail made from many people walking through it multiple times, over the years. We take footpath trail. It leads deeper into woods and splits again into two more footpaths. One is dead end, other lead out to a open field where at the end of field is more woods, we get to the field, and say screw it. Go to other side where woods keep on going. Get to edge of field see new footpath. Follow it and end up coming upon a small clearing that's been cleaned up. Pine store raked away, leaves raked away, rocks bushes etc, all cleared out. 
Center of Clearing has a pentagram in middle and used candles and shit, and a deer skull. Most retarded thing ever. Decide to come back later and see if anyone shows up. Come back at midnight. Friend has brought his dad's .22 rifle in case shit gets crazy. Get to end field and see the footpath and small light up ahead on the clearing. Be as quiet as possible and sneak close to clearing. See three fags in black robes standing around small fire and pentagram. Friend with rifle loads and shoots at a tree close to clearing, then starts shouting in fake deep southern accent about butt sex and pretty boys in robes. Three guys take off and never see them again. Laugh all the way back to town. Though at one point we saw one of them following us but nothing ever came of it. Fun night. Had a friend in Monrovia who told me some stories of strange happenings near a riverbed nicknamed the Wash. Apparently the black market and legitimate satanic cults meet inside of the underground drains, these are big enough for you to stand up and mind you. Apparently every time it rains corpses are washed out and unmarked government vehicles pick them up, one time FEMA had people going into those drains and wouldn't tell anybody what they were doing. Have absolutely no idea if it's real, and I only heard it once. 95% chance it's made up, but it's interesting how Terry's stories of dragons all over the planet, in basically every culture. My mother grew up in Pakistan, and she told me a story about a giant flying lizard that would emerge from a forest, and terrorize a nearby town. It would kill livestock, and if I remember correctly, I think it killed a person or two. The locals rallied and plotted to kill it, but I'm not sure if they did. I was told the story when I was young. I was dispatched to a structure fire, a disturbance call and a request for an ambulance at the same address. Multiple calls on this incident. I arrived on the scene and found a crowd of people holding down a violent naked man, screaming at the top of his lungs, an elderly woman struck multiple times in the head with a hammer and a fully engulfed house, with fire rolling out the windows. I'm thinking WTF? I was able to quickly determine the naked man was the elderly lady's son. He had attacked her with a hammer and set the house on fire as well. She was a lay pastor in one of the rural churches, and he'd become a Satanist while in prison. Handcuffed the wild naked guy and had the neighbors hold him down until additional units arrived. I began administering life-saving care to the woman. She had multiple depressed skull fractures and one eye laying on her cheek. The structure was a loss, the woman was sent to intensive care. The naked guy was scary. He was talking in two voices at the same time. I had him in the back of the police car and I knew he was solo. I'm hearing two voices speaking at the same time. He would cry out for God to save him. And another deep evil sounding voice would tell him to shut up you weakling. I own your soul. The naked guy would scream out in remorse and the evil voice kept telling him the deal was done. This arguing continued back and forth and as the man would call out to be saved, the voice would laugh. I truly believed that I had evil itself in handcuffs. The suspect later hung himself while in prison. I'm sitting here writing this and the hair on my neck and arms is standing straight up. You can believe it or not, I know it happened, and I seldom share this story because it's so hard to believe. But I swear it's true. Be me. 10 years old. Staying at grandparents' farm over the weekend. In the middle of rural northwest Arkansas forest. 30 minutes from the closest town. All kinds of wildlife out here. Deer, foxes, black bears, mountain lions, snakes, crazy bugs, all that shit. Around 10 p.m. I'm alone on the porch listening to the radio, grandparents inside watching TV. Nighttime, pitch black. Only light is coming from the porch light. Watching all the moths and beetles bounce around it. For a moment look out into the darkness. About 10 feet in front of me, something catches my eye. I can't see exactly what it is. It's flying, not slowly or quickly, just flying at a normal pace. Then it starts glowing green. It's not a constant glow, it glows for a moment, then stops glowing again. It glows about once every two seconds. Can only see it when it glows, but it's obviously flying, even though I can't see wings. Easily several inches long and, according to the glow it gives off, is some kind of cylindrical shape. Creeped me out how straight it was, and flew smoothly like a machine. Assume it's some strange bug I'd never heard of before. Watch its disappearance into the distance. Not a firefly because it's far bigger and isn't the same shape. Only other bugs in the region that glow can't fly. WTF.jpg. I'm now 20 and I still have no idea what it was that I saw. 
pickerel is a rough drawing of what it looked like, the yellow area represents the light from the porch, 